God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Amen. That we should be holy without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. The praise of the glory of his grace, he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Amen. In verse number uh, 13, he said, In whom you also trusted, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13, after that you heard the word of truth, gospel of your salvation in whom also after you believe you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory dropping down to verse number 18 that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of, of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, in every name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and put all and hath put all things under his feet, gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, uh, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. You hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Uh, chapter two and verse number two. For in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also ye had your conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. For by nature the children of wrath, even as, as others. But God who is rich in mercy, great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins hath quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved and hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus verse number 10 of chapter number 3 it said to the intent that now under the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be, might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God in verse number 6 of chapter 2 he said he's raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and uh, tonight by the help of the Lord I'm going to work on heavenly places heavenly places Amen. Lord Jesus, I love you. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray, O oh God, that as your word is anointed, that same anointing would fall heavy upon us here tonight. Touch each heart and each life, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor to the word of God. Amen. In, uh, in this passage of Scripture, uh, the word heavenly places mentioned two times in chapter number 1, one time in chapter number 2, and one time in chapter number 3. Amen. All in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. All of them dealing with a place that's beyond the normal place, a place that we would not be... Uh, normally going to as far as in our flesh a place not accessible in the flesh it's not 
uh, attainable in the flesh. Nothing about the heavenly place is something that we could say, I have the right to. I, I, uh, nothing about the place would uh, make me believe that anything that I've done, anything that my family's done, or, or, uh, or something about bloodline or anything else, would be able to say that I would deserve to sit in a heavenly place. It's an undeserving thing to think that I would be able to step into a place that is a heavenly place. We can kind of get the concept a little bit in the Old Testament when David, uh, when David was approached because Saul wanted him to marry his daughter. And King Saul uh, was, was the king and David understood that he was that he was a, a servant, if you will. And though he had climbed up the ranks and, and he knew that the anointing of God was upon him, uh, at that time he was not the king. And he understood that uh, I'm really not that great. And he said, and uh, they said, why don't you marry uh, the king's daughter? And, so, and David said, do you think that I have done anything to deserve that? I don't have the money for a dowry. I don't have the money. I don't have any, any of my credentials are of royalty. I don't have anything that I can say. I don't deserve anything of a marriage uh, of the king's daughter. It was that undeserving place that David felt like he was in. And, uh, and really, whenever we, whenever we think about the things of God, amen, uh, unworthy, unworthy, amen, I don't deserve to be in his presence. I, it's not something, it's not, if, if we took the cross out of it, if we took the blood out of it, and took grace and mercy away from the picture, not one of us, amen, not one of us would be able to say, I'm ready for heaven. Amen. We could all say, I'm ready for hell, but we, not one of us could say, I'm ready for heaven. That's right. To be able to say that I can sit in a heavenly place is a tremendous honor. It's a tremendous thing that God has, has chosen for us. And, and uh, there are there are a couple things, and I'm and I'm going to try to touch on them uh, real simple. I I don't know if this is going to be the longest message. I know it's not, probably not the shortest message because I'm just about to top that. Amen. My shortest message that I ever preached was in Bible college. I had over a page of notes, and uh, and uh, I figured that uh, I had enough. They had given us seven minutes. I took my text, went completely through my notes, and sat down three minutes later. And, uh, and, and uh, man, oh man, if I had that many notes tonight, we'd never get out of here, you know, just, uh, but uh, I've, had to, I've had to whittle the notes away. But on that first time, it was, uh, it was quite a challenge uh, being able to speak. And uh, whenever I got done speaking at that, in that, uh, they had, I don't know, They'd given 30 or 40 of us preachers a chance to preach over the course of a, a two-day period, seven minutes apiece. If you went over the seven minutes, they come and grab your coattail and say, it's time for you to sit down. And so I didn't want to be among that crew, but I knew that, uh, that, I, that I, didn't want to, I didn't want to be the shortest, and I was trying, but uh, I couldn't quite make it. And uh, one of my next, my third message that I preached, uh, Brother Pretty, Brother Jerry Pretty's uh, sister, was uh, in the in the service, and she was about 15 at the time. And I asked her. I said, "Hey, sis," I said, "So how long did I preach tonight?" She said, "You want to know the truth?" And I said, "Yeah, go ahead." And she said, "Way too long." <laughs> <laughs> so between somehow between three and a half minutes and way too long, I need. And, uh, and I'm sure that there's been times that I haven't been able to accomplish either, but I'll, I'll do my dead level best tonight. Heavenly places. There are, 
there are several things that get us into the heavenly places. First of all, understanding that, uh, that whenever we talk about without Christ, without hope, not a part of the children of promise, and uh, everything that could go wrong has gone wrong in our life. It's the uh, semi truck that's heading down the uh, uh, heading down the, the highway and on a downhill run, and uh, he's hit the top end at 80. And whenever he hits it, all of a sudden he realizes when he touches his brakes, they're not there. And uh, and he knows that uh, he's he's still got a lot of mountain left to come down. And that's the way that we were without the downhill fast as we could and uh, and running not knowing how to stop but God hallelujah and uh, and in that in that passage of scripture in verse number uh, in verse number three who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. He said, uh, he said we, we didn't have it, but in verse number 6, he said, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So we understand that it is the grace of God that saved us. But it steps beyond the grace of God. Amen. In order to get us into that place in God that he wants us to be, to make us to sit in heavenly places, there, are, there is uh, there's something that grace did for us. Grace and mercy reached to us so that we could be a display of the glory of God for His praise, for the praise of His glory. Amen. And, uh, and so uh, you think about your worst thing. I'm not asking for recording, but you think of the worst thing that you have done in your life and where you were and where you are. And God says, I'm taking the worst, and I'm lifting up the worst, and I'm showing you the best. I'm showing you what I can do, and this is my display. It's to the praise of His glory. Hallelujah. I, if you can understand the grace of God and how powerful that it is, when he reaches to us in our worst state and he says I'm going to display you and you say who me I don't have anything to display I have nothing to boast of. I have nothing to brag about nothing. And he raised us up together and made us to sit in heavenly places. When you begin to talk about sitting in a heavenly place, for us to talk about holiness is something that should be a total not why should I be or how rather how much more can I? Yes. Amen. Amen. I want to show the world as much of Jesus Christ as I can because I know that if it wasn't for His grace, I wouldn't be in a heavenly place. I wouldn't be giving glory and honor to Him and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Let's worship the Lord for just a moment. I love you, Jesus. I praise you, O God. 
I love you. So the first thing that we understand is that it was the blood of Jesus Christ that raised us up and has redeemed us, given us forgiveness of sins, and then it's the riches of His grace that He's shown to us. And then, and then He raises us up with this, and He fills us with His Spirit, which is the earnest of our inheritance. When we talk about the Holy Ghost, it's more than... Uh, spouting off in an unknown tongue. It's the earnest of our inheritance. Yes. It's a step, and we step from the place where it's things that are known to us into things that that only the heavens have known before. And we step into a realm of a heavenly and is the earnest of our inheritance. Amen. That's why when we watch somebody receiving the Holy Ghost, there is a joy that comes into our hearts. Yes, amen. amen. And, uh, and it should be something that every saint of God begins to rejoice at what, when somebody receives the Holy Ghost. Right. See, amen. because in His presence there is fullness of joy. And at His right hand there are pleasures forevermore. When a person receives the Holy Ghost... They just received the presence of the Lord on the inside of them for the very first time. So in his presence, there's fullness of joy. Amen. Anything, le anything less is in fullness of joy. I thank God, hallelujah, that he makes us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. And, uh, and, so, and so it is that we should be to the praise, verse number 12. Amen. We should be to the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ. We trusted in Him. And so He opened it up to us that we would be able, amen, to give praise to Him, amen, by, by the glory. And, and then He, and, uh, and then it, in verse number 20 of, of chapter number 1, He makes a statement. He said, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. And so when we speak, amen, the same words, amen, that are talking about us is the same words that are talking about the ascension of Jesus Christ. Yes. Whenever he ascended into the heaven, amen, and, uh, and the disciples watched him ascend into the heavens amen and and he was sat in heavenly places oh hallelujah yes. given all authority amen and uh, and everything that uh, could be given to him given the name that is above every name amen the name of Jesus and and in that heavenly place oh hallelujah he's the only one that could invite us Amen. To come up and sit in a heavenly place. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. It couldn't be because of anything that we did. It took His blood. Oh, hallelujah. It took His love. It took His name. And so I come there as the guest. Oh, hallelujah. And now as the Son of God. I come because I was born again of the water and of the Spirit. And I'm made to sit together in a heavenly place, not because of who I am, but because of what he did for me at Calvary. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. To the praise of his glory. Amen. Why would anybody ever want to backslide? Why would anybody ever want to turn around? Amen. I've come too far to turn back now. Amen. I've come this way. Amen. I made up in my mind a long time ago that I was going to serve the Lord. May not have understood what I was doing, but every time, amen, that the devil threw a test my way, amen, and I overcame that test, amen, it's to the praise of his glory. And he lifts me a little bit higher in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Every time that I get an opportunity to talk with the Lord in prayer, 
Amen. And all of a sudden, it's a, we step into that realm where it's not just, Howdy, Lord, glad to be here, and I'll see you later. Amen. But all of a sudden, we step into the realm where we say, I'm so glad to be in your presence. I thank you, God, for what I feel right now. I just came here to tell you that I love you. Amen. And if it takes me, amen, a length of time, I don't care. I'm sitting in your presence. I'm enjoying your glory. I'm and God says, I've got a place for you. I've made you to sit in a heavenly place. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. I'm thankful for heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Amen. And... Uh, raised us up together amen and he and so he he again he talks about in chapter number two and verse number 21 in whom all the building fitly framed to great together uh, groweth unto an holy temple in the lord in whom also ye also are built together for an habitation of god through the spirit he said, uh, let me tell you about the privilege that you have. Amen. You have the privilege of being called, amen, the body of Christ. You have the, have the privilege of being called the habitation of God. Amen. I'm not... I'm not just Kent Bollinger, but I'm the habitation. I'm the dwelling place of the Almighty God. What a privilege is ours today that God would come, amen, and not just dwell with us, but He would dwell on the inside of us. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, amen again. There, are, there are, seems to be a few things that are tied to these heavenly places. The first thing is His grace. Amen. It lifts us up and dig, it digs us out of the dirt. Then it is His mercy and forgiveness. And then it's His Spirit. And then I, and then I thought, the next thing that I could see is the holy things of God. Amen. It's that life of separation that some would say, do you really have to do all that? Do you really have to avoid that? Do you really have to shun the very appearance of evil? Oh, that's not so harmful. Amen. Oh, but I want to sit in heavenly places. I'm a display of Jesus Christ. I am for the praise of His glory. I'm not for my own advertisement. It's not look at what I can do. But it's to the praise of the glory of God. Oh, hallelujah. And so in chapter number, uh, chapter number th three and verse number nine, actually you could back up to verse number eight. Unto me who am the, uh, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Hallelujah. He said, you can't begin to fathom the wealth, Amen, that God has has opened the door for us. Amen. We can't begin to comprehend all the things that God wants to do for us. He said, to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. He said, I want you to know that God will lift you up into a heavenly place so that you can understand how much power and how great God is. It lifts us up into a place where we can have an understanding. Amen. He's a great God. He's a mighty God. And there's none like our God. Oh, hallelujah. What a revelation. Oh, praise God. <laughs> Amen. What a revelation whenever you begin to look at Him. He raises us up and puts us in heavenly places. Amen. Now, when we talk about principalities and powers, amen, we're talking about kingdoms, amen, that, uh, that right now are being ruled, some of them are being ruled by the devil. He raises us up and sits us in a heavenly place, 
so that we can understand that the power of God is greater than the power of darkness. It's greater than the powers of principalities. Hallelujah. Amen. He lifts us up so we can understand that the power of God, oh hallelujah, is the thing that makes a difference in our life. Oh hallelujah. Amen. And uh, I, I, I thought whenever I was, when I was reading this, I thought, it, when it says he made us to sit in heavenly places, I thought, I wonder if I could make that into created us in him to sit in heavenly places. So I looked it up and I can't do that. <laughs> Hallelujah. It just means what it says. He brought us and he sat us in a heavenly place. But what I can do is I can take us just a couple verses down, amen, from that where it says, for by grace are you saved through faith. Uh, and that not of yourselves, it is, a gift of, it is the gift of God, not of works, uh, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship. Hallelujah. In other words, whenever, whenever we came to God, amen, uh, what? it's that old car, amen, that's all rusted out, the engine's gone bad. Tires ain't no good, brakes are shot, and uh, somebody knows how to deal with cars, says, I'll take that car, and he sands up that 56 Chevy, and uh, he polishes it up, and puts the primer coat, and puts the finish coat on it, and he puts new tires on it, puts a brand new engine in it, amen, and redoes the upholstery in it, and when you step back, it says, wow, that's better than what it was on the showroom. And God looks at our lives, hallelujah, and he says, you got four flat tires. Your engine don't work. Amen. Your paint job is shot. Everything about you, amen, is hopeless and helpless. Let me put you in my workmanship. Let me work with you for a little while. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to put new tires on you. I'm going to give you a new hope. I'm going to give you a new direction. I'm going to give you a new strength. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Because whenever I get done with you, you're a showpiece. Amen. I'm here to brag on you. I'm lifting you up into heavenly places and say, look what my power can do. Look what my grace can do. Look what my blood can do. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He said, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. He said every time you're working for the things of God and serving God, amen, you are giving God praise. Oh, hallelujah. You're sitting in a heavenly place. Amen. It might not have said we are made or created, amen, in verse number 6, but it does say it whenever he said, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. He took a hold of us and he put us within the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You, if we're talking about a car, I'd just be nothing but a paint flick right now. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But, I, but, that, but that paint chip that, 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 that I'd be is something that he created and he'd make a bad one look good. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. It's the mercy and the grace of God. You were at, at one time without Christ, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the cover, covenants of promise, having no hope and without God. But now, look at you. Look at what's happened to you now. God's made a change in your life. You're made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And, I, and, and as, I, as I got to looking at, at this, I thought, oh, what a privilege. And I'm, I'm getting ready to shut her down. Uh, but I thought, oh, what a privilege it is. Hallelujah. To be called the Son of God. To be raised together and sit in a heavenly place. Yes. Amen. And so I, I thought, whenever we step into it, we're talking... First of all, we're talking about what he did for us. And then about where he's taking us. It's 
whenever we sit in heavenly places here, it's the earnest of our inheritance. But we're stepping into a place called heaven one of these days. I don't know exactly when it's going to be, but I do believe it's going to be just any time soon. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for His mercy. Let's love the Lord for a moment. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you. I praise your name. He would grant you according to the riches of His glory. And this is the last place that I'm going in the Scripture. And He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. You might be filled with all the fullness of God. You might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto Him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. He said, I, the reason that he's working in us, he's making us to sit in heavenly places. Yes. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. I wonder how many times that I've read this last verse. I like to jump to something else quickly. Because it, it seems to be a tongue twister. But oh, the beauty of this next verse. Unto Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. You look at the church. Hallelujah. Unto Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus. Everything that I am. Everything that I ever hoped to be, it's by Christ Jesus. Unto Him be glory. He raises us up and sits us in a heavenly place. Amen, if you will, on a pedestal to say, look what I can do with the human life. I can change them around. Thank God for the way that He deals with our life. Thank God for mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Anyone have any comments? I'm, I'm done tonight. Amen. I finished off in a different way. And I, I, I don't want to go too long, but I don't want to just continue just because I'm, I'm up here.